Welcome, my beautiful divine beings. Thank you so much for joining me today with our message from the collective, for the collective consciousness from our divine guidance. I do hope today's message help heals and serves you in the most appropriate way. Today I am pulling from the Divine Abundance Oracle cards by Tosha Silver. So let's find out what our message is and uh, dive right into it. Let's flip over and let's find out our first card here is kind of where we're from, going, coming from, our individuality. Every person has their own personalized study plan in this earth school. Our next card, right action. A paragrapha, graffa, literally means let everything that wants to go, go. And everything that wants to come, come. And our last card, ooh, the loss. Sometimes you learn true offerings through loss. You make a passionate invitation for love to take over and bring your own plan instead of the egos. Wow. So take a deep breath in. And as we exhale, we're just going to let ourselves get centered. And I'm just going to move it over just a tiny bit here. Perfect. And let's dive into the message and see if we can get a little bit of a clearer look of what our guides are advising today. So we're really coming from the point that each of us has a divine plan. We all came here with a purpose, a plan of what we are to accomplish while we are here in this life. It may be it may be huge, it may not be that huge. We may just feel like we're a little light and we light the right people, which makes a huge effect. You know, it's the idea of one candle can light a thousand candles. So maybe we're just that one candle that lights one other candle that lights the other thousand candles. Or maybe we're here to go through a tough learning in this earth school because we haven't learned from our previous lives. It's just this point is, wherever we're coming from, we have a plan, a, a path, a plan that was set before we came here. Right now, we're at the right action, meaning that it is time for us to let go of those things that want to go, those things that aren't needed anymore, and make room for the things that want to come in. And I feel like if you put this in a more physical idea, it's like the idea that the more you sell, so and I've, I've seen this with myself, going through, we're not hoarders, but it, it's the process where you get too many things and then you're like, what do I do with all my stuff? And then you start selling it. And when you start selling and getting rid of things you don't need, it's amazing what opens up to come into your life. I've even seen that with myself. Selling stuff that I don't need anymore opens up for me being able to bring in new things and better things. You can almost feel that energy shift. So it's, it's letting go that we don't attach. So if it's not meant to be, it's going to go. It's going to dissipate. And let in the stuff that wants to be here as part of our plan that we have for us being here, part of our earth school plan. And where we're going to end up though, is sometimes that it might really be a struggle. Whatever wants to go might feel like a loss. But we need to be passionate. We need to, to allow the love to take over. Because once we let go, it might feel like a loss. It might feel like we're losing something that we really, truly need. We can't lose something that we really, truly need. Like, that that's the reality. So we have to let it go. Let love take over any of that feeling like we have a lack or loss. See if we can let that come over. And let the plan instead be to bring in what we need. So the message for today we have been here on our personal path. We each have a plan, a study plan of how we're supposed to evolve in this reality at this time. And by allowing ourselves to believe and go with the right action and trusting, certain things are going to leave. Certain things aren't meant to be part of our earth school here and need to be dissipated now. Maybe they helped us at the beginning of this process, but going forward, they're not going to help us and we don't need them anymore. And when we let go of them, we allow ourselves to have space for the things that need to come in for us to manifest. Like we were talking about with the overview of October, that we're in that right place to manifest but it's going to take some time. And part of that might be that we need to remove and let go of the things that we don't need so that new stuff can come in to help us manifest it. And just beware that it might feel like we're losing. We're lo we've lost something. We've got less of something. It might feel like that. 
but you can't lose something that was never really ours. And even if we come to the financial situation of our culture, it, if we feel like we're losing money, the money was never ours. And we have to really look at this, that the money's never been yours. Unless maybe you have physical cash, physical silver, physical things that are in your own possession that you might own. But it, when it's in a, in a bank, in a financial institute, in a mutual fund, in anything that you do not control, it's not yours. It never will be yours. They can change how you're allowed to access it at any time. They can change the details of how you're allowed to use it at any time. And they can also turn off your ability to access it at any time. We learned this in Canada with the trucker convoy. That at any point, your bank account can be shut down if the government deems it appropriate and literally cut you out of the society. So if we look at it at that point, is it a loss to lose something that was never ours? We're just like, we just have the luxury at this moment while the system's still standing to use that until it's not there. And what I feel is going to happen a lot with the financial situation and things that I'm hearing is that we're going to get into a hyperinflation stage. Where literally any money you get in your possession, you will want to spend immediately because you don't know how much more it's going to be to purchase the next, the same thing in a day or two or next week. And that's where we're going. And is that a loss? Well, it's a time for us to lose something that was never there for us, was never for the good of humanity and that we don't even own. We don't own the money. They just create it. And then they give us the luxury of allowing us to use it out of our bank accounts until they deem that we're not, not acceptable or we're deplorables and that we can no longer access the, the peasantry funds that they gave us in our account. And this is also overlaps with just the warning of a digital currency from the government. There's going to be attachments. They put us in a digital currency. There's going to be attachments that there might be expiry, that if you don't use it by this time, you don't get to save it. They don't want us wealthy. That's not your money. If you have stipulations on how you can use your money, how you've got access to it, it's not yours. And I learned this. I actually learned this a long time ago when I started buying cryptocurrency. I was early on buying, I'm a hodler holding on for dear life. I don't know exactly what's going to be successful, but I have invested in alternative things, alternative metals, alternative currencies. And at one point we got cut off where none of our credit cards would allow us to purchase them anymore. We were able to, and then suddenly we're not. And the, and not that we couldn't, we could try other means, trying to transfer money through EFT and stuff like that, electronic transfers. But I realized that they don't want me converting their fake currency into something that is probably more, much more useful. So it's never been mine. The credit card's not mine. The cash in my account is not mine. I might have worked for it. But as per the contract in the cult that we live in right now, it is not yours. If it is in a bank, if it's in an institution, they own your money. Also, what has happened, and I know for sure in the States, and I'm pretty sure it's very similar in Canada, things have been changed into a bail-in so if those financial institutions, which they're all slowly failing, they fail, your mail, your money gets bailed into them. Now they say we have this CDC insurance, so insurance for your deposits, but that's only to $100,000. And then if you had more than that, well, that's all going to be bailed in. And what they have insured, if every bank falls simultaneously or successively, there's no money left in that insurance pot. So you can't count that there'll be any money left in your account as the system breaks. So that's just a forewarning that do not be attached to your bank account and the numbers on your bank account. And if you are, get it out, buy yourself supplies, buy yourself other things that will be useful, that you can always convert back into currency if you need it. Metals are not a bad idea. Food, supplies, long-term storage is not a bad idea. Physical cash on hand is not a bad idea. So that's just what this really brings up and triggers me with is that we're going to feel loss and I feel like it's going to be financial. So prepare yourself for that. And that's our message. We have our own earth plan, our individual karmic plan of this reality. We've got the right action here. 
we have to trust that the things that need to go are going to go and the things that need to come are going to come. So making space for the new system to come in, the new system we choose, not what they choose. And it's going to feel like loss. It is, especially if you are attaching to those things that need to go. Maybe it's the education system. Maybe you attach on it because you really need that form of daycare because it's really, that's all it is. It's not an education system. They're not there to educate your children. We know this from what's happening in certain states. They're taking out reading, writing, and arithmetic, I think was taken out of Oregon or one of the Northern states. It's no longer even a priority. So it's literally just daycare. So again, if that system collapses, again, it's, it's realizing that we need to open up and not feel the loss as these things break down because it wasn't for us and it wasn't for our good. So if we can prepare more mentally and emotionally for it, it won't drag us into the places we don't want to go because we need to come back to the reading for October that we need to stay and go the distance. We need to stay focused on our spiritual progress, on manifesting what we want, and stay in that right mind. So do prepare yourself. And, you know, we can't prepare for everything. Maybe it's financial. Maybe it's something else that we didn't even see coming out of left field that's going to feel like that loss. But just be prepared. It's that when it comes, you're going to see it. And then you're going to get your energy right. Have a beautiful day. As always, namaste. Namaste.